ziua! Bine, bine, bine v-am găsit sau bine că ați... Hello, good afternoon and uh, welcome. And I'm also very happy to see so many of you here. Today we are going to launch an editorial project which is called the Monumental Socialist Art in Romania and the Republic of Moldova. It is actually a continuation of a cultural project, more specifically an online platform and uh, online publications that uh, will be turned into a printed publication. And I will ask uh, Mrs. Irina, the president of ECOBOS, and also a mentor of the National Heritage uh, Institute uh, to deliver some opening words. Hello, I am a deputy director uh, actually dealing with monuments. Uh, I am also very nervous, although this is not my first appearance in uh, public. I am also very happy to be here in my capacity and uh, actually the ECOMOS Institute is a partner with uh, its peers from the Republic of uh, Moldova. And, uh, you know, these are topics uh, that uh, are very dear to us. Thank you very much for your invitation. I am here because uh, in my capacity as an architect, this topic seems to be of great interest to me. And uh, also, I'm very happy to see so many details. Anyway, I would like to clarify that uh, it's not just one publication. Uh, there are several publications that are quite interesting and useful to any researcher of this particular era. This era is rather recent and uh, comes in quite handy as a topic for research. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it uh, is uh, undermined in a way because the attention given to those times uh, is, you know, uh, diminished and uh, forgotten by architects and other people. That is why it is very difficult to very seriously document uh, this particular uh, moment of architecture. Of course, that uh, we are focusing on the Romanian architecture, on the architecture from the Republic of Moldova, and uh, these buildings are not easy to find. We always, or at least very often, pass near these uh, architectural uh, uh, styles and near the buildings having this architectural style and uh, we fail to observe them. Even so, they are works of monumental art, as uh, Dumitru said in the book, and others are less monumental, so to speak. Uh, there are other uh, structures less monumental, I dare say, that uh, accompany some of these monumental buildings or, or, or structures. Of course, that they also reflect uh, those uh, ideological uh, aspects that uh, many uh, generations find uh, difficult to understand and uh, decipher. And uh, that is why it is so difficult to, to place all this style and these buildings in a broader context. Anyway, uh, we are very happy to see this publication. Professor Augustin Iwan and uh, Professor Nesterova from Chisinau have written uh, introductory words that are very, very interesting and they are all really worth studying. This is actually an album and this is also a guidebook. It also provides a map of these uh, buildings. It is actually a guide of monumental art, Mr. Russo clarified. Anyway, I think that this is rather an invitation to learning more about this topic and to researching more of it. I also hope that there will be architects, uh, maybe uh, uh, students, uh, young people who will be making efforts to understand this and uh, make efforts to better understand this heritage, because it is our heritage. 
And I would also like to tell you that uh, these efforts are very important, the efforts that uh, we are making in order to protect uh, this uh, area, these monumental art structures. I would like to give you two examples. The first one is uh, the building uh, built in Cluj as a telephone switch. It is an exceptional model of architecture. It is a true monument, actually, owing to the efforts of the Baku Association in collaboration with the National Heritage Institute and the Ministry of Culture. It has been classified as a historical monument. Unfortunately, the owner did not agree to this sort of approach, and uh, that is why we still need to talk the temporary managers of these buildings that these buildings really deserve to be protected and uh, preserved for the next generations. I would also like to tell you that there is another procedure underway for the monument in Straja to have it also classified as a piece of natural heritage in order to be protected. We are hopeful that uh, this procedure will ultimately help us have this exceptional monument classified as such. It's actually featured on this cover. And these two classification requests open the way to a more systematic action that should be taken in this particular area. So basically this uh, collection of uh, works of art has to be systematized, but the procedure starts from the county level. Uh, as a side note, well, we have proposed in both countries a number of uh, structures, five of them. Four of them in Chisinau, for starters, and then we found 50 more. 26 monumental art areas and the others architectural structures. Also, the state circus was included on this list. Last year, we proposed another structure that was voted by the Council of Historical Monuments as such and now the Parliament approval is pending. So in the Republic of Moldova the list of monumental uh, structures is to be approved by the Parliament. That's their legislation. I would also like to tell you that there have been many debates. There's a Council dealing with uh, monuments in Moldova and uh, actually ICOMOS from Romania has uh, collaborated a lot uh, with uh, their peers from Moldova. Of course that uh, we are decades apart that uh, era that uh, left an imprint on, on everyone, also ideologically. So now after so many decades we are capable in Romania and Moldova to recognize and acknowledge these values, including inter alia, by having them included in the national heritage. So, there, there were some other efforts done before, and that uh, was the basis for our efforts. So now we have this list, which is uh, very well updated. This is a significant step forwards. And this publication will actually set an example that will help open other roads in order to do more. This is extraordinary things that uh, exist. The, these are wonderful monuments that exist in public areas. These are also statement monuments, as uh, some may call them, that uh, convey a very powerful ideological message. But there are also some other apparently 
petty structures. There are some other structures, quite diverse, that send other messages. For instance, naive representations, like an, uh, a children's drawing, to some very abstract and uh, refined reinterpretations of some other forms of art. This is extremely interesting. There is a broad range of representations, a broad range of materials that are used, a broad range of uh, original expressions that are very interesting. Also, this parallel between the two countries is equally interesting. There are different uh, situations and you can also see the same topic being handled in two different ways in two different countries, but according to the same uh, style, socialist realism. So I'd like to congratulate once again all of you for this uh, achievement and for organizing this event. This is a major achievement and uh, we hope to have these books in our collections at the Institute and we will use these uh, publications as reference in our work into the future. Thank you very much for this invite and now I'm passing the floor to Dumitru who will be sharing more details. The project Socialist Monumental Art, Romania and the Republic of Moldova is part of the in-depth research covering the former Eastern Bloc, including Romania and Moldova, and of the Socialist Modernism program launched by Baku in 2013 in order to protect socialist modernist heritage built in 1955 to 89 and then to 91. Our focus is to preserve and revive the buildings and artworks of the former socialist bloc, Central and Eastern Europe, the Caucasus, Central Asia and other regions. Socialist monumental art was initially an instrument to disseminate communist ideology and to create a change in mentality through both content and form. It promoted themes chosen by the leaders of the authoritarian regimes, such as the cult of Lenin, defending the motherland, peace, the universe, wildlife, and so on, and was adopted by artists organized in professional artist unions and provided for by state art funds. Between 1944 and 1955, artists in both Socialist Romania and the Moldavian Soviet Socialist Republic that was part of the USSR followed the strict canonical rules associated to socialist realism. Starting in 1955, useless stylistic elements in architecture and public monumental art were abandoned by a decision of the Soviet leadership announced at a union's conference on constructions. From that moment on, the whole socialist bloc moved away from Stalinist architecture and realist socialist art. In socialist countries, modernist tendencies influenced the professional sphere first, thus penetrating borders and overcoming the limitations of the ideological system. The SOC Monumental Arts Project was launched in 2014 to protect the monumental art heritage integrated into socialist modernist architecture built in Central and Eastern Europe between 1955 and 1991. It covers sculptures, mosaics, as graffitos, frescoes, tapestries, reliefs, town signs, fountains, and so on. One of its first goals is to identify the most valuable such public moments. In the first phase of the project, we focused on analyzing and researching the objects, while in the second phase, we shall prepare listing documents to file with the public administrations. Once the artworks listed as heritage, the same uh, administrators should help preserve them and the specific vibe they created. The aim is to draw attention to this heritage, which we consider to be valuable and meaningful for architecture history. Besides conservation, we are also interested in finding out how art integrated into socialist modernist architecture developed in those countries, as uh, well as in a broader context in Central and Eastern Europe and other regions. 
Our wish is to revive this heritage, not just for symbolic reasons, but also because we believe that these elements have managed to overcome some of the ideological requirements of the time and have given the urban space a certain flavor evoking the character of the era. Monumental art was present everywhere, in the public space, on boulevards, in public and residential buildings, in cultural centers, in cinemas, in schools and universities, industrial buildings, all a clear reflection of the social and cultural context of socialism. Unfortunately, this type of heritage is associated to totalitarianism. This is exactly what we are trying to clarify. We would like to prove that socialist art is valuable and to analyze the significance of that particular slice of history in the wider global context without any partisanship or bias for a certain political system. This is how the whole area to protect and rehabilitate post-1955 socialist heritage, including public monuments, started, and we hope to save its historical value while also striving to improve the general urban image. Looking at the current economic and political situation, we foresee a dark future for socialist buildings and art, many of these pieces being threatened by demolition or undergoing inappropriate renovations that put in danger not just the safety of potential users, but also the image of the city as a whole. At the same time, society may resent socialist uh, architecture because of policies applied during communism. Instead of seeing this heritage as an ensemble of urban objects, works of art and urban compounds, people often perceive it merely as a result of faulty policies. Starting in 2014, Baku Association has officially stressed the need to protect the socialist cultural heritage of 1955 to 1989 and 1991 by making efforts to document and research it and taking concrete steps to list certain buildings as historic moments in a first phase in Romania and then the Republic of Moldova. The first stages of these projects were presented by Baku members at uh, several round tables and uh, professional conferences in previous years. Some of the artwork included in the SOC Monumental Art Project is now in the process of being listed as protected monuments by Moldavian authorities. Currently, the Bureau for Art and Urban Research, which is Baku, is putting pressure so that a group of 26 objects in the Republic of Moldova are acknowledged as part of its cultural heritage and included in the Historic Monuments Register. Socialist monumental art is now restarting to trigger global interest, but those interested punctually in the structures studied and promoted by Baku have a hard time localizing them. In Romania and the Republic of Moldova, not even locals know their existence or their whereabouts. However, the unique quality of these often anonymous monuments has increased the number of visits made by members of the SOC monumental art community in the villages, towns or cities hosting them. In 2014, Baku initiated a database to take uh, the stock and make the inventory and protect socialist modernist cultural heritage. As the inventory advanced, we started to research the architecture and art objects from a historic, cultural and aesthetic perspective. We also researched the way communities relate to this heritage, which is visible in almost every city or town in the former Eastern Bloc. Research consisted both of studying archive materials and the media of the time and in analyzing the current conservation status of the buildings and monuments themselves, including the interventions they suffered over time. All of the pieces of information were gathered and organized on a number of online platforms where specialized articles were published, such as Sock Monumental Art on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, and on internet on www.bacu.ro or http sockmonumentalart.com. Baku members started to actively promote their projects in order to obtain support for the protection of the selected objects and their listing as monuments in Romania and Moldova. For that purpose, they edited guides and albums and made presentations at professional conferences their efforts to identify, obtain protection and raise awareness for artworks 
integrated into socialist modernist buildings or associated to the modernist trend was the starting point of the project Socialist Monumental Art, Romania and the Republic of Moldova. The argument for listing these forms of art are historic heritage is supported by the reality that liberal activities promoted by the authorities in the two countries during the last two decades neglected them completely. A number of valuable socialist artworks have never been listed as monuments and are in a visible process of decay. An example is the bas relief displayed at the Institute of Mathematics Simeon Stoilov in Romania, where we are right now. I guess it's on the other side of the wall behind me. It's made of concrete by Jon Stendel in 1969 as a stylized representation of formulas and equations. Now this work was vandalized by graffitis. Maybe we can find a way to restore it. I have talked with the managers of this institute, but restoration costs are pretty high. A similar piece of work is located in the Mathematics Amphitheater and was created by the same artist. Other unfortunate examples are to be found in Vitan Medical Facility in Bucharest. The inner wall paintings and art were covered by some unauthorized redecoration works. Basically, they covered the walls in polystyrene, further to the request of some private pharma or medical corporations, with the approval of the management. Another unfortunate example of mishandled naive art, as uh, my lady colleague here called it, is in Galatz. In Tsiglina 1 district, dozens of monumental art structures done by Yon Bitsan were destroyed after 1990. These were marble representations of wildlife that adorned the facades of apartment buildings. There are many other such examples of monumental art being covered by new buildings and decorations. The outer walls of apartment buildings and restaurants were destroyed or deteriorated in some way. Another work called Butterflies by Yon Danu was destroyed with the approval of the authorities in order to install some air conditioning devices. The fresco called Folklore of Galatz County, a mosaic built in 1961 by Jules Perahim in Tiglina Commercial Center, was vandalized by installing gas pipes and meters on top of it. On another large mosaic of Jules Perahim's two uh, HVAC devices were installed. The work called The Seasons in Bucharest was monitored by Baku. It was dismantled and relocated by the Road Management Authority of District 6 in Bucharest. It's uh, District 6, Dulmul Tabere neighborhood. I actually checked on it the other day. Luckily, they put it back thanks to our efforts. Maybe they had actually wanted to sell it or something. I don't know. And also some examples from Moldova. Some art in Munchesh district in Chisinau, actually building facades, they are the first apartment buildings of the socialist modernist period. And some of their facades were destroyed and replaced with polystyrene insulation by the homeowners. On one of the buildings, maybe there was someone holding the sickle and the hammer symbols and the new homeowners just didn't like it. The same unauthorized procedure may be seen in the area located in the Grenoble street. Another interesting case is the community center in Rishkan, which was formed of several halls. It was demolished in 2018 to leave room to a German store. I guess you know exactly what store I'm talking about. The small room with 800 seats was covered almost all around its perimeter with mosaics done by Mihai Burea in 1972. These works were on the protection list of historical monuments, but this was not an obstacle to the German investors. The Germans dismantled the mosaic and had it reinstalled on a wall with low visibility of the ballet and opera theater. Another interesting case is the one of the Yuri Gagarin Youth Palace in Kishnev. The youth center was built in the central area of the city with an opening to the Rose Valley Park, the former Lenin Park. On the main facade you can see a work of impressive dimensions, the creation of artist Aurel David in 1972. The whole complex is now in private hands and according to some information obtained from security guards, there are plans to demolish it. 
which also means that the mosaic will be destroyed and uh, that everything will be replaced with a residential compound. Many very valuable works are destroyed or will be destroyed in this way. Whether their value resides in the composition, proportions, innovative materials or constructive methods, the socialist monumental art and public monuments need to be taken into account and analyzed as such, irrespective of the social and political conditions of their time. Baku's initiative to identify and classify the monumental art items of the modernist socialist heritage and to raise public awareness of their value has led to the creation of the cultural project called Socialist Monumental Art, Romania and the Republic of Moldova. I mean, this is the map which is already available online. For that reason, a working group, including architects, historians, artists, all members of Baku, was created in order to start a selection process. A long list of buildings and an enormous amount of literature and documents, such as plans or permitting application files from dozens of institutions, organizations and many cities, libraries and state archives were processed. Recommendations were made, some for artistic merits, others for their symbolic, sentimental or historic value, some for being of general interest or good examples of art combined with modernist architecture. After many deliberations, Baku selected over 200 structures that met the criteria developed by the working group and approved by the board of the association. The Baku Association Photography Department took the pictures. Artist Alla Rusu was invited to draw the detailed maps of the two countries. At the same time, a list of 26 works in the Republic of Moldova was prepared in order to be listed as historic monuments and the list was lodged with the Ministry of Culture. And this happened in 2020 and in this way these 26 structures became protected ex officio and indefinitely until we get an answer from the Ministry of Culture. Eventually, Baku Publishing, with several printed materials on socialist heritage in its portfolio, managed to print two maps, Bucharest Socialist Monumental Art and Kishno Socialist Monumental Art, and to publish an interactive map online. Socialist Monumental Art, Romania and the Republic of Moldova, that uh, were presented in 2019, are the two works I'm talking about. We are now adding the printed guide titled Socialist Monumental Art in Romania and the Republic of Moldova. It contains materials meant to advance the research of the socialist heritage and spotlights only about 200 works, a small part of the vast inventory of the SOC Monumental Art sub-program. The 121 works presented in this volume have been divided according to art forms into five sections mosaics, reliefs, tapestries and s graffitos one, sculptural forms, two, town entrance signs, three, fountains for bus stops, the fifth one. The photos used are part of the archive of the Baku Association as documentary material collected over 2014 to 2023, or in many cases taken specifically for this volume. The Baku Association's photography department has crossed almost the entire territory of both countries to identify the valuable monumental art collections of 1955 to 1989 to 1991, and immortalized hundreds of targets and discovered many interesting or even unknown works. We are deeply thankful to city halls, public institutions and other entities in both countries that were open to collaboration and sometimes added precious information to the documentation gathered by Baku. The working group was counseled by Professor Jon Stendel, Professor Mircha Buzuloyu and architect Tamara Nesterov. PhD, member of the Science Academy of the Republic of Moldova. We are also grateful to artists Nicolae Sava, Vasile Pobne Greșteanu, Sergiu Kuciuk, Romeo Simiraș and uh, Mihai Rusu, as well as to everyone else who contributed to this project. Thanks also to the state archives in both countries and the library of Ion Minku University of Architecture and Planning in Bucharest. We take uh, this opportunity to 
also deeply thank all of the hundreds of uh, people who helped us voluntarily and offered help during our visits to schools, community centers, universities, organizations, industrial enterprises, and so on. Last but not least, we must remind you that uh, the project Socialist Monumental Art Romania and the Republic of Moldova was co-funded by the Cultural Fund Administration, to whom we express our gratitude. We hope that the printed guide Socialist Monumental Art in Romania and the Republic of Moldova will be of use not just to those who visit the two countries, but also to every citizen who respects cultural heritage. We also hope that artists, sculptors, architects, urban planners, engineers and students will use it as a reference material and as inspiration for their work. We believe a time will come when all the materials on public monuments and monumental art from 1955 to 1989 and 1991 will be gathered in one place. We did not attempt and we would never have succeeded anyway to include all of that in this book. Most of the works we presented here are distinguishable by often original elements, synthesizing local culture and traditions. Thanks to their shapes and materials, some of them can still be rehabilitated and restored, so they can stand witness to their times. Therefore, listing monumental art integrated into socialist modernist architecture as historic heritage and including it in restoration programs with priority for items in urgent need of protection is the next step to be taken in order to preserve the cultural richness of Romania and the Republic of Moldova. Thank you, Dumitru. And, uh, of course, that you have behind me a snapshot of uh, this uh, modernist socialist architecture. Thank you very much. This topic is very interesting, and uh, what you've managed to do is outstanding. I'm not going to wonder, sadly, uh, how many of the buildings you've seen will survive or will have been repaired in the meantime. Well, a good part of these uh, buildings are monitored by our association members. Mr. Russo uh, responded. So we've, we visit them sometimes in, uh, you know, other countries, and including Romania and the Republic of Moldova. Yes, but uh, this will never help uh, anyone against the decision makers who decide to, you know, paint this or that building in a certain uh, color type. Anyway, this situation is pretty sad. And uh, I would like to also see other sorts of decisions, like decisions to make the most of these uh, buildings. Yes, um, I think uh, we can submit a list to the National Heritage uh, Institute, Mr. Dumitru says, uh, and uh, then you can do something about it. Well, there are over 200 uh, locations and sites. It would be pretty complicated to handle them uh, very quickly. Yes, uh, we'll discuss about that, the lady said, because we do have uh, right now um, some uh, works to uh, decide on uh, the procedure to expedite some things, to speed up uh, the c uh, permitting procedures and so on and uh, so forth. So I think that we should uh, be optimistic. So basically this is more like a theme topic. No, th this is actually an inventory, Mr. Russo explains. Yes, this is uh, a, a theme uh, study, the lady says. And um, I guess uh, that oh, we have to, you know, have them on a, on a list, have all of these monuments on a, on a list. And um, uh, we will know in this way how to handle them and what to do into the future. 
of course that uh, there is a study uh, here in this um, book. Uh, the, the study is, is very good. And I'm inviting now Augustine here with us. Now it's, it's good where I'm standing. I, I don't want to be there in, in the, um, you know, this part of the stage, this part of the, of the building and of the hall. Well, at least one of the statues there, here, yes, so that has to go. So that has to go, definitely. Yes, it's actually, you know, a passage from Stalinism to modernism. I don't think that uh, statue is compatible with the overall style of that particular area. Anyway, it has to go. And one of the reasons why what you do is still, you know, in not so mature, I dare say, is that we haven't yet understood what that period is about. We don't yet understand the, that particular period in time. And if you don't know what happened back then, well, that is going to be reflected in how you do things. So I guess we need some uh, background. So that statue is actually the statue of a bandit. I don't know how to tell you in, in better words. And we, d we don't know yet about that statue. And uh, we don't know about that statue. And likewise, we don't know much about uh, that period. So that is why we don't understand much of this architecture and this uh, style. That's what I'm saying. So... Um, do you know why I hate this hotel? That is the first place I visited in Chisinau in 1990. Now it's closed down. Yes, it's closed down. So they had a uh, person who was a floor manager. So basically every floor of the hotel had its own floor manager. I thought uh, that person was from the intelligence uh, police, intelligence service actually. So basically there was a person, I guess it was from the intelligence service, doing floor management for each and every store of the hotel. That's what I remember from uh, my first visit there. And now they are no longer there. That means that change has happened over time. So there was also uh, a first uh, period, like the first wave, when we started working on this. We actually talked uh, about uh, the architecture of the socialist surrealism. And I actually wrote a book about that in 2013, and I gave up on this topic because I was actually starting to like it. So I had to put, my dis to put some distance between myself and what was going on. Anyways, I was uh, dealing with the way in which the people entered into Stalinism and then got out of the Stalinism period. So that is why I was dealing with at the time. Other people were doing other stuff. So basically it was the socialist bloc. This is where we were uh, inhabiting. Other uh, people were calling it the socialist concentration camp. And that referred to all of the nations that uh, were dealing with the socialism back in the day. So Mr. Russo approached me and asked me to hop on this project and we started studying the buildings and the style and I this is how I got to write again about the monumental art. Our experience is a little bit uh, different. So you saw the mosaics and the buildings, the, uh, um, the way in which they are classified. I think this is something reminding me of Borges. 
anyway, the etymology of the word uh, monument comes actually from the word grave, from Latin. So basically, the word monument that we are using now comes from a word which in Latin means grave. So I don't think that monumental architecture is some word or syntax that we should be using. Mm. Well, let me explain. Let me explain, Mr. Russo. So my criterion was um, uh, connected, actually, to the connection to uh, the public space. So I think that the inner space has to be handled or understood differently from the outer space of a building. Anyway, these two elements uh, are associated to the public space. I mean the uh, socialist realism and the monumental art that you're talking about is associated to the public space and the public life. There's an example that the most senior people know of, those uh, f movies, those old communist comedies that we used to have in, in, in Romania back in the day, the so-called BD, uh, that was a brigade dealing with various uh, petty, you know, offenses. And th they were quite funny, but they were full of ideology, the ideology of the times that we were living through back in the day. So basically the people looking now at these um, uh, films and movies, watching them, are not capable of understanding the true meanings of these movies because they did not live uh, during those times. So this is the same thing that applies to these particular architectural elements. Another problem is that there is no cultural fact reminding us of those times. There was indeed some culture, some culture, but there is no cultural fact per se reminding us of those days. Well, there are some works in Romania and the Republic of Moldova um, that, um, you know, remind us of, the, of those times. And uh, these, these uh, uh, pieces of art are actually very valuable. Anyway, there, there is a different kind of normal. There is the Western normal and the Eastern normal. The Western normal, we used to live uh, very well, but the Eastern normal is different. We have a, a, a certain sort of normal. We had other people with other ideas ruling these countries from the East. That is why we had different sorts of normal. And uh, this architecture that we called as monumental or the realistic or whatever also used to exist in the West. But they look at it uh, in the West with different eyes. So I think that uh, we should also so be saying and stating that we do need to preserve these uh, architectural structures. All of these elements should be preserved. And then we have to think how it happened that some people thought of destroying because these are monuments. You know, we call them monuments, so how come that someone can ever think and conceive of destroying a certain monument? The problem is that no one will defend these buildings and structures in any way with a gun just because um, they are, you know, monuments. I think that what these people are doing is very important because, you know, this is the first layer of what should be done, you know, the database. So the database was not there. We didn't have a database. So this is the first layer of uh, what you do. So it's good. The database is also available online. So basically there is no excuse for people not doing any research 
in this uh, particular uh, line of work because now we have the database so we have the basis for our activity the basis for any research so uh, we should be doing this um, now we move on to the next uh, phase uh, and uh, we'll be uh, turning to the uh, you know quick Q&A at the end so now I'm inviting architect Ioana Petrescu PhD researcher and architect dealing with heritage and dealing with this uh, uh, particular topic of the monument in Straja creation of Pavel Turku Pavel Bukur sorry Mr. Pavel Bukur died years ago but we do have uh, his daughter and his wife here in the room with us Ioana please uh, this is one of the most impressive uh, monuments this is actually yes a piece of art this is one of the most impressive achievements uh, in of those times thank you very much hello everyone I think that we also need to need to mention here Viorel. Viorel actually collaborated to working on uh, the monument in Straja. He is actually the author of one of the bas reliefs from the monument in Straja, a bas relief which no longer exists. It was destroyed or uh, stolen and uh, this monument is one of the accidents that uh, happened during those times it was actually you know ignored somehow or not seen or left alone and uh, it's also uh, quite different because it's a monument of abstract art that was built at a time when the abstract art was not that appreciated because people were unable to understand it. So, before my presentation focuses around the monument uh, in Straja, but um, you know, I don't want to repeat whatever was presented uh, in other times and uh, I would like to talk about the situation uh, that exists right now. So I look forward uh, to see the presentation of Mr. Augustin. I actually eager to know more about this uh, monument that can be interpreted in several ways. Mr. Augustin Ion came up uh, with some very interesting ideas as usually and I would like to mention here the fact that uh, if you start to get passionate about something, uh, sometimes uh, it's good to take uh, one or two steps backwards, just to have a better view. The classification file is already, is almost ready. And uh, of course uh, that uh, there were some articles written back in the day, that um, illustrate the hardships and the difficult times through which uh, uh, they had to go through when they built this particular monument. I would also like uh, to uh, exemplify some fragments of the movie called Salutar de la Gija that uh, was done uh, during the communist days in Romania, Greetings from Ajija, that's uh, the movie title. So it's quite uh, illustrating of the ideology that existed back then. And uh, there were many other things that uh, we want to forget about those times, but I don't think we should be forgetting all of them. For instance, we should always remember the very nice achievements uh, that existed back then and what Baku did is outstanding. So, we celebrate four years today when uh, Dumitru Rusu made the first presentation in 2009. And back in the day, 
the, the team from the Historical Monuments Directive they're celebrated uh, one year from the time when they joined the ones that uh, were actually fighting to save this monument. Uh, these efforts were started by the artist's family and the other people who contributed to building this uh, monument. And they were making desperate efforts in order to draw the attention about uh, uh, the bad state, the plight in which this monument was in. Together with the Irina Yamatescu, I visited the Ministry of Culture uh, years ago and uh, I um, requested the access to some uh, commission. First of all, we approached the National Commission for Historical Monuments. We uh, talked with the commission members uh, about the suitability of uh, having this monument classified as a historical monument. So basically all of the efforts are very new. Having a monument classified as historical involves some cultural evaluations and one of the evaluation criteria deals with the number of years. So how old that monument is. That, uh, docu that the monument is quite recent. It was uh, built, uh, I think, in the 80s, or repaired in the 80s. Uh, and some of the people talking to us uh, believe that uh, our action was absolutely necessary. There were also other persons participating in inventories, in stock-taking activities involving the buildings done in the communist uh, and actually socialist uh, uh, years. The, these people were familiar with the architecture that uh, existed back in the day and uh, they were truly aware of the fact that those structures are very valuable. There were some objections though from the side of some persons who were more familiar with the medieval art. And uh, they also recommended us, uh, to, uh, us to approach the so-called public forum section people. So we approached them and all of the people there were extremely enthusiastic uh, about our idea. So the sculptor Vlad Chobanu took the floor and said that the art value of the monument is outstanding. And apart from that, it also has a historical value. Although it is pretty uh, recent, it actually marks the end of an era. So we need to consider this particular meaning this particular side of that monument. We also got a letter from the Ministry of Culture in which uh, they were using a pretty administrative language to tell us that we can start the action necessary to have that monument classified as a historical monument. So we started uh, that particular action. We approached uh, the Constanza County uh, Culture uh, Directorate. Oh, I don't know uh, how to define the uh, attitude of some people. Some people were not interested or not really concerned. Their position was quite uh, difficult to uh, understand or to classify in a certain way. And um, so, all of these efforts started from a wish to save this monument. And the ones who had an opportunity to see the monument could see or, or, uh, that it was vandalized, just like uh, the best relief on this building that hosts us. So I would like to say as a side note that uh, the monument in Straja is in the middle of nowhere, is very far away from the nearest uh, community. It's not protected in any way. 
it's isolated. That is why it is very easy to damage it. But here we are in the middle of Bucharest. The building is protected. I guess there's also a fence and security guards. And even so, the building is vandalized. So it has to be restored in some way. Now getting back to my main stream of thought. So the wish to save the monument was the one determining us to start this uh, classification works and that actually started in other situations. The need to save a certain construction pushed us to making the effort to have it uh, classified as historical. But here in Straja, uh, unlike other situations, when we made an even uh, preliminary evaluation, even simple information about how it was built, uh, we realized that it's not on the limit of uh, classification, that uh, item did not comply the minimal uh, criteria, but it's way above. So it is more than 100% uh, compliant uh, with all the criteria that could uh, make it a historical monument. The information can be broken down in two. I mean, uh, it's information about local uh, monuments, monuments of local importance and uh, monuments of national importance. So that is why I'm saying that there is a, uh, a set of two categories of, of information. And according to this sort of information, you decide, and it is decided, who gets involved in protecting a certain monument, the local authorities or the central authorities. To us, it was very clear that that monument is a historic monument of national importance. There are also other intentions to save that monument, specifically because it was perceived as being uh, isolated, subject to elements and to the influence which is unwanted and some ideas, some very funny ideas came out to put it softly to relocate that monument to a different place and this first idea appeared in 2017 if I'm not mistaken when the mayor of uh, the town of Ovidio said that he would like to relocate the monument from where it is in Straja to the town of Ovidio. And he had chosen a roundabout. A roundabout right in the middle of the town. So basically you may imagine cars driving around that particular monument. The idea came back again a couple of uh, years later and there were people taking this idea very seriously, including people from uh, the uh, Constanza County Culture Directorate. They visited the site and they said that this wouldn't be a very bad idea and it would be a solution to save this monument. So remove it from where it is and uh, take it to a different area that has tourist potential. So to turn it into a tourist attraction. The monument in Straja is, you know, is there and there is something that we can do about it. Maybe some solutions could be found. Anna Bukur was telling me that one of the engineers that actually worked on the structure of this monument started to have uh, some uh, uh, ideas about how it could be relocated. But this monument, you know, is inseparably connected to that particular spot the foundation is also very deep, almost 20 meters deep. 
that were built and designed in that way in order to hold this particular uh, monument, which is almost 40 meters high. And apart from that, it's also connected to that particular uh, place because it was designed to be there. And including the sketches of artist Pavel Bukur involved the entire area and also the relief and the location nearby that uh, canal that is also deep. And also when it comes to the height of this monument, because, you know, this is not like a tiny monument lost uh, in the relief, but its height was designed so as to be visible and so that it can tower over that particular area. So I believe that if you relocate it, the value will be lost. That particular area was not chose randomly in order to host that monument. I've seen a number of interviews that were done in the past years with people talking about uh, this uh, monument, such as Corina Voiku. So the interviews were taken over and included in the longer movies. that uh, some of which have been launched recently. I'm getting back to those interviews. Well, those interviews talked about the way in which the idea, the underlying idea of this monument that was actually a spot that was chosen especially to monitor the construction site activities. That spot was also used for the official visits that were made in the area to see how the works were uh, doing. And that monument was also located in the nearby area where there were very many young people uh, working in the digging of those uh, canals. So basically that monument was also placed there in order to honor the memory and the efforts of all of those young uh, construction workers. So the leaders of the country decided to do something there to honor the memory of these young people, including Nico Ceausescu, the son of uh, Nicolae Ceausescu was uh, one of the people who admitted that it would have been good to have the monument there for the sake of the young uh, workers. So that is why this particular monument is very strongly connected to that particular spot. And that is why it should be left uh, there. There are many other uh, people who are doing crazy things. For instance, uh, some young people climb up the monument and then throw them into the void in order to see how it is to fly with a parachute, They do to do paragliding. And there are many other people doing crazy things. This is not a monument of public art. You know, it was not there uh, for its uh, tourist uh, potential or to strengthen the tourist potential of some area. This monument was built there uh, as a celebration and commemoration of uh, people who worked there so hard. Although, you know, it could be speculated that uh, this monument could be used for tourist purposes. Maybe if we do that, the decision makers would be more encouraged to actually do something uh, or, or do more in order to save this monument because it does have its own potential. Also, it is equally important that people should understand in the future that the public who is now doing the wrong things around this monument 
has to be educated. So the public has to be educated so as to understand what the monument is about in order to understand it better. And um, these people should not be allowed to be there. I mean, there is an ATV trail passing right through the area where the monument is. So these people should not be allowed to be there to do such acts. These people should only be allowed to be there in order to admire or look and contemplate this particular monument. We need to do more in order to stop this monument from being vandalized. The situation right now, the status quo is pretty unclear. I saw the monument a month ago. I uh, actually saw the monument from the other side of the canal. Uh, I saw that monument from uh, up close four years ago. Actually, across the canal, there is um, a small community called Baragano. This is where I was in order to see the monument from the other side. It's far away from the highway connecting Bucharest to Constanta. So I wanted to see the monument again from the different canal in order to see what opportunities could exist on the other side of the canal. It was a pretty clear day. There was a very strong wind blowing there, but uh, this phenomenon is very well known. So when we passed by uh, Jija, uh, in order to go get closer to the monument, there was a storm. So it was impossible for me to get closer to the monument. So I, I need to, I, I, I had to, to take a different uh, way. In the meantime, there was also some fog. It also got foggy, so it was difficult to see the monument uh, uh, clearly. But uh, even so, the monument is absolutely stunning, and it has to be protected, and it has to be classified as historical. The problem is that uh, we are unable to do much right now. There are many administrative uh, bottlenecks. For instance, we need to know who the landowner is. Maybe the landowner is known. There is a person saying that they own the monument, the foundation for youth in Constanza County, which is the continuator of the county organization of the young communists. The old UTC, Union of the Communist Youngsters. So they say that they are the owners of this monument and the owners refuse to give us any papers that they allegedly have in order to check the actual owner. That is why the owner doesn't want to collaborate with us and uh, the owner said that any action taken to have the monument classified as historic will be challenged in a court of law because uh, the owner doesn't agree to that. In the meantime, the owner started to become more flexible. But even so, we don't have any official paperwork stating that uh, this uh, foundation of the Constanza County is the actual owner of that area, or of that monument, actually. And uh, things are pretty well advanced, but we are unable to finalize our works. And we start to see things differently now. So everything looked uh, very simple, but actually, the reality is much more different. Now, we can wonder, why do we have to have that monument classified as historic? Because it is a monument known internationally. It is even mentioned in speciality works that have been published internationally. It is mentioned in 
also national works. The most recent uh, example is the album which is launched today, but also in other books, other albums, even recent albums. There was also covered by a documentary that uh, was recently broadcast. It actually uh, the setting of a very small movie that was shot there. So what else do we need? So the value of this monument is very well known. If and when it becomes a historic moment, the owners will become more responsible, more accountable. They will have a different sort of uh, responsibility. But, you know, there are many opportunities to get some funds in order to restore the monument, because it is very important to have the money uh, necessary to restore the monument. If you look at it from far away, it looks fine. But if you get closer, you will see that it was vandalized. It was covered in, and it is covered in graffitis. Also, there are parts of it that were removed. The bas reliefs have disappeared, and that uh, happened. In 1990, the other two disappeared uh, ten years later, but, uh, you know, it's stainless steel. So you may imagine the sort of tools that those people had in order to cut through stainless steel. No one saw them, nobody did anything. So the structure has to be evaluated. Uh, there needs to be uh, done some replacement. So, so there are parts that have to be replaced or strengthened. And uh, this monument was never inaugurated. And uh, that uh, space around it has not been finalized. So we need to get to that final shape that uh, was expected for this monument. I mean, like redecorate the area and prepare the surrounding area. As soon as uh, the classification procedure is done, hopefully rather sooner than later, well, then we'll stand every chance to be able to start taking other action in order to prepare and decorate and develop the surrounding area adjoining this monument. It deserves our attention, like it or not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation. I am very happy to see that uh, you are optimistic. One of the challenges that we have is to establish the so-called protection area around uh, the monument and also the legal regime, but uh, also the protection area around the monument because, you know, the power of this monument is also given by its very location and you need to make sure that uh, you need that you protect this monument. It's not uh, only people vandalizing, but it's also, you know, this particular spot, which is very windy. I mean, maybe building uh, wind farms should not be allowed around this uh, monument. Some distance should be taken up to the nearest, uh, you know, wind turbine and other such uh, Mm, rules should be instated in order to protect and define uh, the protection area very well. There are some UNESCO principles that govern this particular protection area around the, uh, each monument uh, and, you know, there's a certain setting that you need to take care of in order to uh, build the right landscape around a certain monument that will make the monument stand out and put it, you know, like in a better light because this whole setting will mm, 
improve the experience that you feel and that you have when you look at such a monument. So this so, is a very good case that we are talking about, the case of this monument. <coughs> But I think uh, that uh, the action that you're taken can be uh, followed as an example by other people working to protect other monuments. I think this is very important. And you always need to remember the general context, the background. Because otherwise the monuments like this will disappear, will get degraded, and, uh, you know, damaged. And uh, that is why you need to have the information in order to understand a certain piece of art. And then as soon as you understand this piece of art, other information will become attractive to you. You will understand everything in a better way, in a better light. In the Republic of Moldova, the monumental painting was known as early as the Middle Ages, but tradition never survived. It only stayed within the religious buildings. The medieval wall painting was gradually restricted because architecture came in line with the European style, in which uh, the appearance of the building was given by the details of the architecture. In the Republic of Moldova, just like in the Soviet Union, art became the most important component of communist education. So artists were tasked with the mission of creating work immortalizing the greatness of those times. And the best topics were Lenin, peace, defense of the motherlands, work, the universe hoping for a better and more just uh, future. The first uh, monumental painting in the Republic of Moldova was the ceiling of the performance hall of the National Theatre done in 1953 in oil on canvas. The composition involved a snapshot of a hora, a round dance of uh, boys and girls that were adjusted to the geometrics of the performance hall. Much to our regret, it was replaced with a new painting when the building was uh, repaired. Also, the sculptures on the the frontal part uh, of the hall were destroyed. There was a directive that uh, came out uh, to simplify the constructions in 1955, and uh, that uh, caused a sudden turn in the Soviet architecture. The socialist realism was abandoned, to be more specific. Architecture had to become more modern, and uh, some uh, other features had to be used, such as metro rhythm systems like chiaroscuro and other systems and that directive simplified the architectural appearance and every decoration was given up so that was also done in pair with um, simplifying things and uh, saving money in this way other buildings could be built both residential and administrative building but these buildings had no aesthetics they were were just geometrical shape that uh, people resented. The population didn't like those new sorts of buildings. So the architecture came up with a solution to apply these so-called monumental paintings in order to adorn the buildings that had lost their fight against the socialist realism. And I could give you as example the fresco done in the officer's house in 1961 or glory to the conqueror of the universe and also the planetarium that had been uh, in a church and so on. But this church was given back to the metropolitan church and the painting was lost. Another challenge was the wall painting done within the administrative buildings and these paintings were done according to the Bon Fresco technique. One of these paintings are located in the Kitskani community center of uh, Kaushenia uh, district and of course uh, this particular painting received a gold medal awarded by the Soviet 
Art Academy, and、uh, the author was、uh, Eliad Bogdescu. Also, new ways of expression were searched, and artists started using the mosaic. Like the classic mosaic, the new mosaic used for the first Soviet、uh, works involved assembling ceramic tiles and cubes, but it advanced in time by using other materials and other techniques. One of、uh, the techniques was to use the so-called Assemblies of stone. They started to use bas reliefs, reliefs, and other techniques. Given the conventional characteristics of the plastic language, the mosaic also involved other elements with different shapes, different sizes that were all integrated in the actual mosaic. The mosaic technique, compared to the wall painting, has the benefit of withstanding time and the elements. Therefore, it can keep the Original colors. The mosaic technique became very much requested to adorn the buildings, public buildings, and residential buildings, and memorial structures, and so on. The art appearance had some genuine qualities. It、uh, became very decorative, and it all was also characterized by brevity that was、uh, reduced to geometrical shapes. The first、uh, panels. Uh, of the figurative compositions using the mosaic technique were done for Lumea Copilor Store, the World of Children Store in Kishinev. So basically, they had these、uh, panels featuring cosmonauts, happy childhoods, the underwater realm. They were all done by ceramic tiles. That were very colorful. During these times, other figurative compositions were done, focusing on sports inside、uh, the Valla Morilor Park. Also, decorative uh, friezes uh, covering topics specific to the austere art of the Soviet times. They moved from. Symbols to allegories in order to illustrate the mixture between several types of arts, and I will also mention here the、uh, fresco on the side of the Trade Union Palace in Kishinev. Unfortunately, the building was demolished and the the、um, painting was relocated. I would also like to mention here the lateral、uh, facade of the building of the Moldavian. Writers Union. This value is very much important. It is very beautiful. Another work is the mosaic called the Plowman of the Universe on the Youth Center facade in Kishinev. It's made of colorful glass chips that give to the building an unusual appearance because you know the light reflects and refracts through those glass areas, and it has a very nice appearance. But we are afraid that this facade. Can be also be demolished. So some original works appeared.、Uh, there's also other techniques、uh, used in 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 the public buildings that are, are absolutely wonderful. In the other years, there are other areas, other buildings that were done according to this style. There were some dull buildings that had to be revived somehow. So that is why the mosaics were built, the so-called wall paintings. But apart from this, residential buildings and monumental buildings, we should also mention here the bus stops. The bus stops before the、uh, Olympiad in 1980, the bus stops were repaired and. Readorned in order to enliven them, and、uh, they were built along the road taken to carry the Olympic flame in the relay race, with all sorts of motives like folk motives and uh, uh, people and persons. But after 1990, also the religion started to revive in、uh, in Moldova, and there was a new interest taken in、uh, religion. So the artists had to reinvent themselves, had to keep up with the times, but while using the things they had learned during the communist years. Now I'm、uh, opening the discussions and the、uh, Q and A. Covering this particular topic or the、uh, interventions that、uh, we've heard so far, the speeches. Please, you have the floor. I think、uh, maybe we should call it the monumental art, because 
we you know we suggest the fact that uh, there is some uh, socialist art I I don't uh, want to define ideologies but uh, you know regions this is a monument art integrated in the modernist and socialist works of architecture this is what I said so basically it's devoted to public activities but uh, they are deprived of a Stalinist ideology we also have some Stalinist uh, ideology works but we don't want to you know uh, go there not uh, to mention that this particular terminology is already used in uh, ECOMOS and in other uh, databases you know and um, it's also that it's quite representative for the socialist modernism and so on and so forth but uh, anyway you need to tell people how to understand you need to have a very specific definition of your terminology in order for your uh, uh, consumers first so to speak to understand the proper thing well, I guess there were some uh, questions from the audience. There was a question earlier that I remember, but I don't know if uh, the person wants to ask it again. So if there's someone else wanting to say something, please feel free. I am a researcher. And uh, I have some things that I don't understand uh, from Mr. Russo's uh, presentation. Why do you want to separate uh, the socialist art from the socialist uh, regime? I don't understand this particular thing. And I also have another uh, idea. You said that they were the only witnesses of the socialist regime. I mean, I'm talking about these uh, works of arts. There are some other things that uh, are, you know, silent witnesses of those uh, of, of that regime. Uh, socialist art, you know, was also built in the 30s and even in the 90s. That is why I don't think that uh, your definition of socialist uh, modernism defines necessarily the communist days. And uh, it's, you know, uh, something built by the state. This is art built by artists commissioned by the state. So you need to understand what the state actually wanted to do. What was the purpose of this particular action taken by the state? You know, artists were more or less uh, independent, but uh, they were commissioned by the state and they had to follow the instructions of the state. You, you don't know who the uh, authorities were that commissioned uh, these works. It could have been the local authorities, the municipality, the state, the government, but anyway, it was, you know, art done further to a political order. So someone would give a political order and further to that political order there was a piece of art built somewhere in a certain way giving out a certain sort of message. So uh, that is why I don't think that we should be separating this particular art too much from the socialist years. I think that we cannot separate that sort of art from everything what was being done back then. I don't think that we should be uh, turning this particular art into a fetish that is separated from the overall situation of the day. Also, indeed, you talked about the monument in Straja that you said that uh, is a celebration of the young people working there. But there are other people working uh, to build that uh, canal, for, such as the uh, political prisoners and other sorts of prisoners that were there to be re-educated. Many of them died there. Many of them lost their lives while working 
to dig that canal for which this monument is erected. You know, there was the Communist Party, they had a certain ideology, the monuments followed this uh, ideology. So, you know, the people do not identify themselves with this particular monument. That is why they keep vandalizing it. I mean, they are not vandalizing, for instance, uh, the mausoleum of Marashesht that was built for the soldiers of the f uh, First World War, but they are vandalizing uh, these uh, pieces of uh, modern art, so-called modern art, or, uh, you know, this is like a protest, you know, when a, a person uh, destroys this uh, socialist uh, monument is, uh, you know, like a statement, just like uh, people did when uh, they destroyed the statues of Lenin, when they beheaded the statues of Lenin and uh, of other uh, communist uh, leaders. So I don't think that we should be turning uh, these uh, works of art uh, into fetishes Yes, I, I think that it is impossible, utterly impossible, to separate these monuments from the socialist ideology. And I don't think, not for one second, that that is the pur purpose of uh, Baku and uh, the Baku members. We are trying uh, to draw an alarm signal. We are trying to organize some information in a systemic manner. Please let me finish. Mr. Dumitru Russo is an architect. He read a lot about that era, and that's the key in which he interprets this era, by, you know, studying these monuments. And actually, the very nature of these monuments is very uh, well understood, and it's never avoided, and it's never ignored. This uh, piece of arts are results of uh, the ideology of those times and uh, this art cannot be severed from the ideology of the time but by promoting these documents uh, the purpose is not to promote those times or to you know get back in time there is no intention to revive times long past the uh, purpose is entirely different I think that there should be a, um, a better separation between the times and the art if you want to do something and if you want people to start protecting uh, this uh, particular area. Yes, indeed. I think that we should educate the younger education. The younger education doesn't know much about those areas. That is why we first need to educate them in order for them to be able to understand correctly what this sort of art is about. So, you are working for uh, the, the institution that uh, does research on the archives of the former intelligence uh, service of the communist uh, uh, year. So basically you are very much involved in doing research on those times. And uh, that is why I'm expecting you and the people like you to be more objective and unbiased when it comes to art. Of course, I say again that this art cannot be separated from the ideology of the times. But it has to be preserved. It's a pity not to preserve them. For the indicative uh, list of monuments to be included on the UNESCO list of monuments, there were some propositions made, including these particular, um, some of these monuments that have a universal value. We have uh, proposed five items, uh, five prisoners, former communist prisons, penitentiaries, from Romania have been proposed to be included on the list of UNESCO monuments because they are outstanding uh, buildings. You know, there's entire clouds of, of stories and, and things that happened in those uh, uh, penitentiaries and uh, people need to understand this in order to be able to compare 
with the current times and with whatever happened in other countries. So we do have uh, the former uh, communist guard of attention detention, Mr. Vishnescu, that was sentenced. Also, Ceausescu was uh, sentenced. So I. Yes, you you said indeed that there was a construction site where young uh, uh, people work. You said that there were young people who died. Yes, it's uh, correct what you say, but you need to understand that the construction site was started with young people working. Only then were added other people who died there. You know, so this is not what we want to do here. Socialist realism is associated to Stalinism. So we are talking about two different things, Mr. Russo says. So uh, we are talking uh, of an architecture which is rather connected to the West, not to the East. We need to make a difference here. This is what we want to do. We promote a modernist architecture we are not saying that it is uh, ideologically socialist. It's socialist because it belongs to society. And uh, since it belongs to society, it can be socialist in the East, but it can also be socialist in the West. These are elements of the heritage. There were people who actually grew up with these uh, items. Some of these uh, people are nostalgic, they associate it well, to the, these particular areas, others are not. Some think of Lenin, others are thinking of their own uh, very wonderful youth. You know, it's a difference between the ways in which people approach and understand this art. We are not going to save uh, each and every apartment building in Bucharest. We are only going to work on these particular uh, uh, buildings that tell a story. That is why we have proposed some of them to be included on the list of historical monuments. Of course, there are many other representative buildings and we are not going to have them all included on the list of historic monuments. There are about 200 structures uh, included on the online platform. Actually, we found over 500, but we haven't included them all because they are not all representative. Yes, I do imagine, the lady says, that uh, it was traumatizing to be an artist uh, during those times when the freedom of expression was subject to censorship. So in other areas, for instance in literature, uh, they would delete uh, some of your pages. I don't know how this happened when it comes to sculpture or architecture or other sorts of art. So, you know, s this monument, for instance, can also be interpreted, the, the one in Straja, I mean, I think it's the work of a genius, it can also be interpreted as uh, a monument against, like a statement against uh, the communist regime, like a statement, you know, it's like a coded action taken against the narrow-mindedness of the communist uh, regime. So uh, that is why the communist regime didn't understand what uh, this uh, uh, piece of work was about. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, difficult to quantify and understand exactly uh, what the artists meant uh, with uh, their work now, 50 years later. So uh, they are true values and I stand to that statement. There were many other people working there, not only happy young people working in, on that canal where the monument is, there were also a lot of young military who worked there, forced labor, uh, political prisoners, uh, other prisoners, and so on, that w worked there and, and uh, died there. You know, 
we wanted to um, have a project uh, to organize some uh, boat trips to that area in order for young people to understand what the canal is and see the monument and see the water locks. But this is not happening, you know. This was a project that uh, was uh, thwarted in a way and there are only barges and uh, transportation ships uh, passing through. Uh, we have another question from the audience. So, the art of a certain area, of a certain era, sorry, reflect the ideology, but there are also layers. The layers that make uh, reference to the political order, to the political ideology of the time, uh, I don't know, a certain idea, a certain, uh, you know, um, concept. But there are also the so in so-called independent layer that can only be seen by some people, by some scholars, and uh, if these uh, layers are visible enough, they can even contribute to undermining the ideology that uh, is given by some other aspects of a certain work of art. Just like, for instance, in this uh, work of art that we see in Straja. Uh, for instance, uh, 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 the artists dealing with Dada and other uh, trends like this were, were doing specifically this. So, there are contaminations with the Western modernism. Le Corbusier and others uh, influenced uh, uh, this sort of uh, art. And any connection to that Western art is very well done, very subtle connections exist uh, with the Western art and uh, uh, they have to be admired. So, I think it's some sort of an aesthetical recovery that we need to do. And uh, this is going to help uh, the, um, you know, the research that the young people do. This is going to be very interesting and helpful and useful for these young people. The postmodernism and post postmodernism mix and remix some of the images of the past. There is a famous book, Iron Fists, uh, written in the West that uh, uh, influence the fascism, Mussolini's ideology, visual arts that uh, was uh, done in the past, the Nazi ideology and so on. So as far as a visual artist is concerned, we're talking about a so-called archive. So basically this is not an ideological defense. This is not defending uh, ideology. This is about, you know, taking stock of the past. This is very important and this will come in as very useful for the artists and researchers. Of course, that um, uh, a lot of people from this uh, room are uh, absolutely appalled by the horror of those uh, years. I am uh, part of the family who had no connection with, the, with communism and uh, the uh, early post-war socialism, but I do appreciate this effort that you are doing in order to recover the, the memory of those years and the memory of the people uh, living through those years. This uh, is how the society evolves. This is how we develop on a certain basis, on foundations that we don't need to forget and that we need to have in mind always. It's, it's important and very interesting that you are talking about these particular uh, uh, elements. So I, I think these uh, elements need to be, uh, you know, included in an inventory. They have to be defended. They are there. So what can we do? Should we demolish them? Should we delete the history 
alongside these monuments, or should we take care of them just as a remembrance of the past and maybe write a book for other people to understand in a better way what these uh, monuments are about? Yes, we don't want to only uh, include them in an inventory or in an archive or just take stock of them. We just want to protect all of them and keep them there. You know, they are there. We need to keep them there in, in good condition. There are many uh, other areas. Yes, I, I think that maybe in other areas, uh, in other countries, some people would have removed these uh, uh, works of art and, you know, uh, put them on display in a, in a Tate gallery because of the aesthetic value or anti-aesthetic value because we can also consider them in that particular way. And uh, oh, in, in, indeed, the people's wish to vandalize or to write graffitis on these uh, works are not actually statements against those times or against those ideology. It's just a, a manner of expressing one's thought in an artistic manner on whatever means you have handy. And in this way, you know, you basically make a statement on top of a different statement. This is what the graffiti does or, you know, Yes, I understand, but uh, you know, a historic monument needs to be understood in a different way. When people think of historic monuments, they think of cathedrals and, I don't know, statues and stuff like that. But when uh, we talk about socialist uh, monuments, or uh, the, the object of our discussion today, people understand them in a different way. So I think that uh, they all belong to the past. They are all remembrances of the past, and that is why we need to treat and handle them all in the same well-balanced manner. And there is indeed some denial that we can see around. And uh, if, we, if, we, if we leave our times and waste our time denying, then we will waste uh, everything. We will waste uh, people's creation because these people were our, you know, uh, predecessors and this is what they created. This is what they did. This is how they expressed themselves, like it or not. So I don't think that we need to destroy that. I don't think that we need to lose that. So that is why we don't have to just deny and forget about everything just because they remember uh, us, uh, remind us of a, of, a, of a distant past that we didn't like, you know. So they are actually part of the so-called built uh, environment. And... Uh, A lot of buildings were erected, a lot of structures were built during those days, and these are part of that, those, the, those pools of, of structures that were built back in the day. We cannot deny that. There's nothing we can do about it, and we have to keep them there. And uh, I am anyway happy to see that there are some people working to preserve them. We need some very serious research on this, and this research should also make some uh, connections to the actual times, to what happened, to the ideology. Uh, but we, of course we are not doing that in order to revive some old ideology, but we are doing uh, that just to understand better our own past. I don't know if there are any other questions from the audience or other uh, final remarks. I, I studied um, mural art in, in Bucharest and I liked uh, a lot uh, this particular topic. So you said that we need education 
we need to educate the public in this particular line of work and I do agree to that but have you thought of any opportunities to attract the attention on the aesthetic uh, value of these monuments uh, because you know once they lose their utility they only there for their you know appearance and uh, you know for the idea they convey the artists who work for the party and who were commissioned by the party to build uh, these uh, monuments were not necessarily keen about the communist uh, party ideologies but they just wanted to express themselves in an artful manner well these are the efforts that we do exactly to c convey this sort of uh, um, uh, meaning so we have workshops we organize conferences this is what we do in order to educate people that's the first uh, uh, thing that we are taking and then we will try to have them included on the list of historic monuments so this is what we want to do I think uh, that uh, you are actually talking about the way of translating uh, our effort to the public and translating this art to the public. Um, and uh, anyway, there are many uh, resources available in the online environment. I think that uh, we should work more on the visibility of uh, these projects. And. Uh, uh, I, you know, paradoxically, in Romania, there are not so many people working or liking this particular uh, activity. The, there are many people in Poland, in Germany, who are really interested in this particular sort of art. Also, it would be great to obtain, you know, uh, like a trigger in certain communities so that these communities can react uh, positively to these efforts. So I, I, I don't think that um, <coughs> too many workshops should be organized, but uh, uh, the awareness should be raised so that some people get triggered. I think the society should be healthy enough in order to react properly to this sort of uh, endeavor and enterprise and to this sort of uh, effort. So, uh, uh, we should not uh, forget about those times when the communists were destroying the monuments uh, done by the bourgeois society uh, between the two world wars. So, this is what was happening, you know, in the early 50s and 60s. We should not be doing now what they were doing back then. I'm very happy that you brought that up. I think that this is a very uh, good idea for the conclusion of this meeting. So if you're interested in this topic, if you're interested in, in, in this particular uh, line of work, I, I would like to tell you that I uh, work uh, in uh, ECOMOS and uh, I am the coordinator of a project uh, dealing with heritage of the past. Uh, so the so-called negative heritage, dark uh, age uh, heritage. So there's a lot of research about that. All organizations from all over the world have the opportunity to be part of this working group dealing with this sort of heritage. So if there's anyone from the young people interested in this sort of uh, uh, research in th these particular areas, you are kindly invited to uh, j join us. It's uh, the ECOMOS Scientific Commission for the 20th Century. That's why it's called. So uh, let us conclude on this optimistic note. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you very much for coming and for joining and also thank you very much for this book. Have a wonderful evening.